welcome back. Thanks for being here. It's Amy Scott Grant, your favorite spiritual ass kicker. And um, yeah, ass kicker, not ass clicker. Like I almost just said, you know, I had Chinese food for lunch and I swear it's like you ask for no MSG, but sometimes you're like, I could just pass out right now. So I'm telling you, I know there was MSG in that. But anyway, um, and I forgot to like take out any energetically before I started eating, but that's okay. I do want to apologize for like how extra pasty white I look. I actually do have makeup on today, but we still haven't fixed the shades. See, that's, this is like, this is how pasty white I normally look. Now this is how pasty white I am today. We still haven't fixed the shades that came crashing down. I know we just been busy. We're going to do it this weekend. Yeah. It'll get done. It will. But in the meantime, I'm like as white as paper. Here's paper. Here's me. Look at the comparison. It's pretty close, right? See, and actually this helps with the white balance. And I take it away and then I'm paper again. So it's your favorite paper, spiritual ass kicker. <laughs> and we're talking about, today we're talking about being silly. No, I'm just kidding. I got that down pat. I could totally teach you how to be silly. No, we're talking about being open. Hold up, hold up. Don't go anywhere. Cause I know you and I know what you're thinking. You're like, no, I totally, open. I'm, I'm totally open. Amy, I'm like a book. I'm like wide open. I'm so open. I'm like, just so you know, the more a person says that they're open, the more, the less willing they are to look at the areas of life where they're not open, where they're blocked. Okay. So maybe just keep that in mind. But here's what I want to tell you. We all like to think that we're open, but we're not as open as we think. It's really surprising to me. So this is what we can talk about. So even if you think you know what I'm talking about, I would really encourage you to like, just chill out and be here, like be present with me. Okay. So we can have this conversation about being open. Okay. And if you're resistant, you want to be somewhere else. That's just proof. That is evidence that more than anything, this is where you need to be right now. You showed up here for a reason, right? Yes, of course you did. Of course you did. How do I know? Cause you guys always write me and you're like, oh my God, it's exactly what I needed to hear right now. Well, you're not showing up to watch this the instant I recorded it. No, it's been recorded. It's been put up. You're showing up to watch it now. That's because you want to hear it now. You're open to hearing it now. Okay. So just trust that this is the perfect message for you right now. Okay. So we like to think that we're open-minded. We like to think that we're open-hearted. And in many cases, to some degree we are, right? It's, it's hard for empaths not to be open-hearted and open-minded. It's hard for light workers not to have an open heart and open mind, right? It's just, it's in our nature. It's who we are. But as an empath, and I'm saying this because you probably are, if you don't know if you are, post a comment, I'll check in for you. But odds are, if you're watching this video right now, you're an empath. And what does that mean? That means you can feel other people's stuff. You know, that means you can, uh, if you walk into a room and people are angry, man, you know that instantly and you'd really prefer to get out of there and not sit in that anger and awkwardness and weird vibes and all of that. Okay. So empaths, we, we, we come into this world with a big old open heart and we get trampled like a lot and we suck at boundaries. Generally speaking, I've gotten much better. I've gotten really good at setting and keeping boundaries, but there's still times when I don't and I get trampled and then I'm like pissed off, right? I'm like pissed off at myself, pissed off at the person who trampled my boundaries. But for the most part, I'm good about it. And that's why I can help teach you, right? I help teach people how to set, especially empaths, how to set and keep boundaries. It's super important. So how do you balance? Then it becomes, how do you balance the setting boundaries in order to keep your energy intact, balanced with keeping an open heart and an open mind, right? It's tricky. Balance is tricky. It takes focus and awareness and attention. I don't want to say effort. It doesn't necessarily take effort, but it takes attention. Like you have to pay attention in order to make it happen. It doesn't balance. It doesn't just necessarily happen on its own, at least not for people. It happens elsewhere in the universe, but not so much with people. So how can you 
keep an open heart and an open mind. Well, for starters, and this is why I started the call saying, hey, you sit down, listen, I got some stuff to tell you. <laughs> then you're, and you want to hear it or you wouldn't be here right now. That is what is called a beginner's mind, right? It's something we talk about meditation. It's not like a term that I invented, but it's about going, approaching something with the mind of a beginner. And a beginner is curious and they don't think they know everything or that they have all the answers. Do you know, I recently started working with a couple of business coaches and they, you know, that was what I told them. I said, um, you know, I told them what, what I had done and where I was at and where I wanted to go. And they said, okay, we can show you how to take this one area of your business and completely shift it, they said, but it's going to require you, Amy, to think about this area in a way you've never thought about it before. And they were sort of like setting it up like, hey, you need to be open. They didn't say that, but that's how they were setting it up. Like, look, you can't come in here, you know, like, oh, I've done this, I've done this. And I told them straight up, I said, look, if I, if I knew this, I would be doing it right? I wouldn't be working with coaches. Like I'd already be doing it if I knew it. So I'm here because I don't know this piece and I want to learn this piece and you guys could teach me. So that's why I'm here. I said, so don't worry about that. I'm not going to come in like, oh, I already know. I tried that. Just show, I said, I'm really, really good at following directions. Just ask my guides, right? They just show up, they go, Amy, do this. I don't know what that means. Fine, whatever. I'll do it, right? Really good at following directions. So and guess what? The stuff they're working me, the stuff they're showing me is working like crazy good, like better than I could have imagined. And this is what happens when you come into something with a beginner's mind, especially when you find the right teacher, right? And when, you, when you're certain that the teacher resonates with you and is a good fit for you and that they actually know what they're talking about, right? <clears throat> so coming into it with a beginner's mind, this, this thing that they're showing me, I mean, I've been using this thing for years, but completely in the wrong way. Because <laughs> I just, it's just funny to me. Like, wow, could not have screwed that up worse. <laughs> Seven, eight years, I don't know, a long time. But I mean, I didn't know. Nobody ever showed me in, in this particular way. And I'm like, oh, I get it, the way that they're showing me. So that's how you can approach anything with an open mind, right? A beginner's mind. And I, I don't know if you have this experience, but... <clears throat> two of my kids are like this, where they, and they have similar human design charts, so maybe that's part of it, but when they are learning something new, they're just like in a constant state of frustration <laughs> because two of my kids are, um, they're very keen on mastery. They want, if they want to learn something, they want to become masterful about it. The other one, not so much, but the, <laughs> but two of them, very much so like what, and that, that's probably how I approach things. Like, why would I bother learning things? Do you know there's a reason that I don't study human design? Like there's a reason that when people work with me one-on-one, -on -one, the first thing I do is send them to Bury and I pay for it. And I go, look, this is included in your coaching package is a session with Bury because I love the way he does it. And he does it so well. Like I trust him to just like go through your human design with you. So that I don't, I don't need to learn that. I don't have any interest in learning that because there's no half-assed learning for me. You see, if I'm going to learn something, then I want to become masterful at it. So this is the same approach two of my kids take, but then they get frustrated as hell when it's not mastered like this. How could you, right? You're a student. You have to come in and be a student and actually learn stuff. You know, and I mean, I get it. I was a little frustrated when I first started learning how to paint because I was like, what is, she? I don't even know. What is a filbert? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. What's a bright? What, why do they call it a bright? Why don't they call it a flat tip? I don't know. They call it a bright. Why do they call it a filbert instead of like the little oval tip? I don't know, but that's just what they call. So there's like new words you got to use. When you learn something new, there's new techniques you got to learn. There's skills you got to build, right? And it's a whole like process to begin to learn something. And it's so much more useful if you come into it with an open mind, 
right? Versus if I came into painting going, yeah, yeah, I know I took six hours of painting in college. Learn nothing, by the way. But I'm just, people do that, right? They come in and they go, yeah, I already know all this. I already know all this. That's not an open mind. So anytime you say, yeah, yeah, I know, or mm -hmm, I know I've done this before, I got this, you know right then when you hear those words come out of your mouth or you hear those thoughts in your head, you know you, you don't have an open mind right then. You just don't. And you might really think you know it, but then why are you working with a teacher or a mentor if you really knew it? Right? Or you just, you just want to get to the good stuff. I already know this. Well, do you know it as well as you need to know it to build that foundation onto the next thing? So coming into something with a beginner's mind means I know nothing, you know, or what I know is irrelevant in this context. And I'm coming in as though I know nothing, even if I do, I'm setting that aside and walking in like it's day one of class and I'm here to learn. That is what beginner's mind essentially is. And so coming into something with beginner's mind helps you keep an open heart and an open mind as you come into something as opposed to, I know, I know, right? Now it's different. I will tell you, um, I have also been in situations where I've come in with an open mind and I've done things, even though I have like a huge amount of experience in one aspect of it, if I decide, okay, no, I'm going to take this course or whatever, I'm going to take it like I know nothing. And then I will do it the exact way that I'm told. And there have been times when I decide, you know what, this aspect of how I do it actually is better than what they're teaching me. And this is why I'm always telling you, don't like just take my methods and go, oh, this is what it is. Like you're so welcome to shift stuff and change it, improve it, make it better and make it your own. Right. And that's how I feel about everything. And that's how I think everybody should be. Like, don't be a sheep, you know, be a sheep dog, be a leader, be the one who's got the shit together and who has the confidence to follow their own, their own intuition and their own guidance. Right. So even these coaches that I'm working with, okay, don't tell them I told you this, but, uh, you too, Gannon, cause I know we love you, Gannon, for being our super, our spiritual ass kicker supporter on Patreon. Thank you so much. But don't, don't you tell them either, okay? So don't tell these coaches that I'm working with. But, and they even told me, they said, okay, we have these like three huge components to this course, right? This is the course that you need. And you um, definitely want to take the first part of the course. And you definitely want to take the third part of the course. So like, you're already going to know most of what's in the second part of the course. So I'm like, okay. The second part of the course, sure enough, they're right. Not only do I already know and have a ton of experience with that part, but I actually went into it with an open mind, took their advice and, and was like, this is not working for me at all. So because I have my own method on how that middle part works. And so I'm like, mm -mm -mm, it's clear to me. But I wouldn't know that if I didn't go in with an open mind. And if I was working this program in the way that they laid it out, and something didn't work and I had not been open to try that middle part their way, then I would have had to do even more troubleshooting. Like, hmm, why isn't this working? I guess I must have missed some, you know, maybe I should have done it this way. No, I went in with an open mind, tested it out and was like, nope, nope, my way is superior for me. I totally trust that the way they're teaching that middle part is superior for them and probably a lot of their clients who don't have that level of expertise that I have in this one segment, right? of the process, but I'm like definitely sticking in my way on that, right? But the first part and the third part, I didn't know any of that stuff, none of it. Like mind blown, right? And who cares even one of those would have been worth the whole like investment of time and money and resources and everything that I'm putting in with these business coaches, right? So it doesn't even matter that the second part, whatever, that works for you, great. I know what I'm doing, but the first and the third, holy crap, it's helping me serve you better. It's helping me reach a lot more people. It's just like a win-win for everybody. And I'm having so much more fun in my business. I don't know if you can tell that, but I really, really am. Okay, so beginner's mind, coming in with beginner's mind. So it's one thing, my point in telling you that is that it's one thing to come in with a beginner's mind and be completely open to the instruction, the guidance that you're receiving. 
and carry that through and then be able to like to have the confidence to compare and say, actually, my way works better and is superior to this new way. Then you'll know, then you'll know. And that brings you even more confidence about your way, right? But if you don't come in with beginner's mind, you might totally miss this other way that's far superior to how you've been doing it. You know, either faster, or better results or less effort or more fun or whatever, right? So that's what beginner's mind is all about. Okay, and then so how do you keep an open heart and open mind? Well, you could do a heart chakra opening, right? That's pretty simple. You, in fact, I explain exactly how to do that in 2018, boom. You guys have that. I think most of you have that. So you could do a heart chakra opening. You can, um, meditation is a great way to sort of like open your mind, open your heart. You could do um, chakra clearing. You could have someone do all this for you. There's lots of ways to go into it being open. But here's the thing that's crazy. Your idea of open will definitely change over time. I can tell you when I was a kid, my, I listened to everyone in my family and I, you know, when you're a kid, you repeat a lot of what you hear. And I can remember telling people like, yeah, my sister does yoga. Like that's so weird, right? Like all my freaking neighbors do yoga. Everybody does yoga now. It's like no big, it's totally mainstream. Yoga is like a hundred percent mainstream now. Okay, everybody does yoga. There's nobody left on the planet who's like, she does yoga. That doesn't happen anymore. But that happened in 19, <coughs> when I was a little kid, <laughs> right? It was not, it was not common. It was kind of like, you know, sort of weird, unusual, and not a lot of people did it. It was an odd word. Now it's total mainstream word, total mainstream, okay? So if you, and then of course there's every step in between. I mean, when I was a kid, it was like yoga, that's weird. Now I totally do yoga, right? It's awesome, love it. But even when I first started doing healing work, when someone was teaching me how to tap into my intuition and my guides, I remember, I remember explicitly, we had to do this clearing that had no words. And so I couldn't, there was no way for me to sort of process. Someone else was leading the clearing and I was a part of it. And we each had a cracker and we had to do this sort of like odd ritualistic dance. And then we like locked arms, you know, like, you know, when brides, bride and groom does like, you know, where they sort of lock the arms to drink the champagne. It was kind of like that, except we like locked arms and then ate the cracker. And I was like busting out laughing. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I had seen <laughs> up to that point. I was like, <laughs> eating a cracker. Okay, this is a clearing. That was like 10 years ago, right? Now that would not phase me at all. I'd be like, now eat the cracker and the clearing sun. Who gives a crap? It doesn't bother me at all. Um, I remember hearing maybe like five or six years ago, I remember hearing about somebody that got messages from flowers. Like they were, re they would receive messages from flowers. And I remember thinking, God, that sounds weird. Like no weirder than half the stuff I could do. Right. But it's like now I'm like, it doesn't phase me at all. I'm like, Psh, of course you can read flowers. I just and I just learned the other day. Have you heard of candle reading? Like we actually put this in the glossary and uh, Lightworkers Guide to Getting Started because I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. So, OK, so if you don't know, I'll just tell you what it is. Candle reading is they just they burn a can they light a candle for you. Like you hold your question in your mind and they light the candle and they let that burn for anywhere from hours to days. And then they extinguish the candle and then they read the candle, like they interpret from the candle. And it has to do with like where the soot shows up and where the, the wax has dripped. And if there's like more on one side than the other side, and if the wick is bent and if like on and on and on, there's all this subtle stuff. It's called candle reading. And I'm like, that's amazing. I promise you, if I'd heard about that five years ago, I would have been like, that sounds dumb. That just sounds super weird. I don't know what that is. Right. And now I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Right. So this open mind thing, you'll just keep coming on different and different levels of it. Okay. Now, why don't I want to talk really like super, super short, really quick. Why don't we stay open all the time? Okay. It's mainly fear and betrayal. OK, it's like you're open. I'm sure you could think of a time when you've been like open, happy. I love the world. And you got shit all over like somebody just dumped on you. 
trampled you, rained on your parade, peed in your Wheaties, whatever you want to call it. And so what did you do? You closed off just a little. You may, it may have been so bad, like it could have been so traumatic that you closed off completely for a while. But if you don't know, that tends to lead to depression, isolation, potentially even suicidal thoughts, right? But, um, but probably it closed you up a little. And if that happens enough times, you keep closing off more and more and more. And you could become isolated and you could become separated from your intuition and the things that make you an empath and so extraordinary. So betrayal is a big one. And then what do we do? We have to practice forgiveness, do healing work around betrayal so that we can be open again. Um, and and uh, being wrong is another one. Like, let's say you you were like rocking and your intuition was cranking. I can't tell you how many times I clear this same thing for somebody. And usually in a past life, you were like a freaking into it, intuitive rock star. And then something went wrong. Either you were wrong, your message got interpreted, or somebody ratted you out, which is betrayal. But even if you were wrong or the message you gave was wrong, that still shows up like a form of betrayal because you end up feeling like your guides betrayed you or that God betrayed you or that your intuition betrayed you or whatever. So it's usually betrayal, which requires healing in order to move forward and open up again, or it's fear, right? And you might be afraid of your power. Usually that's what it is. Fear of success, fear of your power, fear of abusing your power like you may have done in a past life because most of us have. Um, like it's a fear of like really stepping into your potential and possibility. So fear and betrayal are the two main reasons that we would not be as open as we would like to be, or as we think we are, or as we say we are. Okay. All right. So hopefully I've given you some things to think about in terms of being open. And I'd really encourage you to embrace this concept of beginner's mind. And I'd love to hear your comments. You know, why don't you post a comment? Let me know what's, what's coming up for you as a result of hearing this information or seeing this video. And yeah, I think that's it. All right, we're done. So thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.